ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to ASEAN CFU Big Tank, a collective piece of people to people from below ASEAN. This is a game that the uh, Center for ASEAN Studies has a chance to organize such a really important symposium. And as all of you know, Southeast Asia, the legions do all different cultures and civilizations to meet. I believe that all the legions in the world can match its culture, religious, linguistics, and ethnic diversity like ASEAN. For myself, I have chance to travel to many countries, especially the other countries, the mainland Southeast Asia, for many times. And it can help me to understand how Thailand and East other countries in uh, mainland Southeast Asia connect to each other. But when I think about island country like Malaysia, the Philippines, Indonesia, Singapore, and Indonesia, it's quite difficult for me to uh, imagine how do they connect to each other and connect to the other members of ASEAN. Today is just a great chance for me to hear the perspective, the perception from the scholars who come from these countries. And before we start the talking sessions, may I invite Associate Professor Dr. Nisit Pantamit, the Director of Center for ASEAN Studies, Chiang Mai University, to deliver a welcome remark, please. Ladies and gentlemen, and first of all, I would like to welcome all of you to this symposium, ASEAN CMU Think Tank, a connectivity of people to people from below ASEAN. And I would like to uh, express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Chong Jin, uh, the Executive Director of ASEAN uh, University Network of UN, for attending this event. I would uh, also like to thank you at once for all the speakers for today and including Dr. Abitan Chi Hong from um, the Dean of the Faculty of Science and University of uh, Rene University and Ms. Siti Rohaya Matrahim, lecturer at the Department of Economics, Faculty of Business and Finance at the University of Tantu Abdul Brahman. Mr. Lucio Petro, lecturer and a research fellow at the Chinese Studies Program from Singapore's School of, I'm sorry, School of Social Science at Antonio um, de Manila University, and Ms. Irene Chen, Associate Research Fellow with the China Program in the uh, S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies, for being with us here today to share your extensive knowledge and insights about today's topic. To give you a brief introduction about us, the Center for ASEAN Studies at Chiang Mai University is a unit that has the mission of disseminating knowledge and developing academic work on political, economic, social, environmental, and cross border issues in the ASEAN community. In the past few years, we have had the opportunity to organize several academic activities, including the ASEAN camp for us, for uh, students, and the multiple public seminars, as well as publish many academic books. The objectives for today's event are to promote knowledge and understanding of the change that are taking place in the ASEAN community and its mechanisms, as well as to study and analyze issues related to Thailand through the ASEAN community. Secondly, to support the economic growth, social progress, and the cultural development in the region through joy and values and the spirit of equality and partnerships. In order to strengthen the foundations for the prosperous and peaceful community. Um, thirdly, to provide the space to share a knowledge and experience between the scholars, researchers, and students. And last but not least, is to promote the 
research and development of knowledge about the ASEAN community. On the behalf of the Center for ASEAN Study, we hope you find this symposium interesting and insightful. Thank you again for taking the time to participate in this event. And may I know invite Associate Professor Dr. Pippo Nguyen to deliver the opening remarks. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Executive Director, ASEAN University Network, distinguished speakers, participants from Brunei, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand. It is, very, it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to Chiang Mai University, Chiang Mai, Thailand. I feel very honored to be hosting this very important event, the symposium on ASEAN Save New Think Tank. Connectivity of people to people from below ASEAN. This conference aims to promote connections between Thailand and ASEAN countries, and South Asia, Asia in particular, including Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, and Singapore. The conference will be an opportunity to improve relationships, exchange experiences, move towards economic prosperity for ASEAN countries, as well as increase economic stability. The ultimate goal is to promote a sustainable ASEAN community, where relations and interactions continue to thrive between members of the ASEAN countries and other regions. I would like to thank the Center for ASEAN Studies of Chiang Mai University especially the director of the center, Dr. Nisit Pantamit, for organizing this conference to commemorate the ASEAN Same Youth Think Tank. Without further ado, I would like to take this opportunity to open the conference and wish the conference very successful in generating fruitful exchanges and discussions among participants from different countries in the, this region. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, th thank you very much to the, the Center for ASEAN Studies, uh, Chiang Mai University, for inviting the UN Secretariat to, to say something in this uh, opening morning. And my gratitude also go to the the, uh, the Assistant President, uh, Dr. Pia Pong Niem Sap, uh, for the presiding over the, the opening of this uh, conference, and Dr. Nisit, whom I've known for some time. We have some uh, business together <laughs> with the, the China Think Tank still ongoing. The engagement with China is something very difficult. I think uh, Dr. Nisit know very well. Uh, good morning to you all. The been invited to uh, to say something uh, about the the ASEAN connectivity, people to people cooperation and, and cultural exchanges. Uh, I'm 
speaking to you today in the capacity of the practitioner, not not the academic. I'm not I'm not an expert in in ASEAN in ASEAN matter or international relation in Southeast Asia. I'm not that kind of expert. I'm just a practitioner who have been trying to to get the universities connected in the past decade. So my talk this morning will be a kind of reflection from many of the, the works done by the, the AUN and highlighting the, the past, past year especially. Uh, when we talk about how culture exchange, people to people cooperation, I guess everyone thinking the same thing. This is from my own note about the, the issue of regionalism. We're thinking about the same thing that probably the ASEAN regionalization and the, the aspiration for regionalism is a bit uh, too much of the top, top down from the, the, the government of, of our uh, ASEAN region. People to people probably refer to what, what we've been doing related to the, the non-state actors in, in this region. Uh, but, but what I'm what I will discuss here is not about every, every non-state actor and my work is focusing on, on the university only. So I'd like to start by uh, showing you a bit of the perspective from, from our students. Uh, this is from the one of the joint statements of the, the AUN Educational Forum. Um, we, we've been doing this educational forum for over 16 years now. It's a kind of gathering together of, the, of our students from 10 ASEAN countries. And now in the past six years, we have also students from the plus three countries. Uh, those students who are very interested and active in the, public, uh, the issues of the public affairs, we gather them together and let them discuss on the particular issues or topics uh, in the manner of the a youth summit. And the educational platform is, is not is not a mock or not a not not something like model United Nations. Th those mock conference or meeting is is to groom participants to be uh, uh, diplomats in the future. But our educational forum, the AUN educational forum is, is for real. We adapted and applied the, the parliamentary procedure, especially f of, from ASEAN, in order to facilitate the discussion by our youth, by, by our students. Also from Chiang Mai University, also set, sending representative to, to this forum every year. They discuss it for real. Uh, students representing their university and their country and the result of which we we have a joy, a kind of joy statement from, from the voice of the student we, we send it every year to ASEAN Secretariat to ASEAN Secretariat particularly to the senior official meeting on youth 
this is a kind of voicing the the ideas and recommendations from from our students. And a couple of years ago, in in one of our educational forum, uh, we talk about the ASEAN connectivity, ASEAN and, and ASEAN plus three connectivity, and and these these are these statements are from from that forum. Uh, just show you what what is the perspective from the students. Uh, probably they they know much more than than myself. For example, number one, they they recognize the the a lot of misunderstandings and unwillingness and problems related to information when we when we cooperate among ourselves in this region that still there exists this kind of understanding through the, the lack of information even though we're in the in the era of social media in the era of free flow of of information but still there's a misunderstanding apart from that is unwillingness to cooperate with each other in in this region and, and in and in East Asian region also the student recognized that uh, uh, Southeast Asia and East Asia is a very, I say plus three is a very diversified uh, region. Diversity is uh, the trademark of probably the trademark of our our region. Um, if you go to uh, visit the European countries. You could find similar thing. For example, if you go to Romania, and then you hop on to to England, to Germany, and go north to Poland, you still see the same design of the the Middle Age cathedral. You could you, you could find a similar artifact that in in Europe. But in Southeast Asia uh, people talk about rice. Apart from that, it's really diverse. Uh, a lot of artifacts, a lot of cultures, very really diverse. That reminds me of when I of my former teacher, history teacher, who who taught me that in in our region, in Southeast Asian region, the purpose of war is was was to to gain manpower, to get people, move people to your territory. This is very un unlike what happened in the European that you have people like Mr. Uh, Erasmus, Mr. Rousseau, who, who literally walked across many countries in Central Europe. In Southeast Asia, it's only war and trade with China and India. I, I could see no one literally walk across across m many municipalities in the in the ancient town. Uh, <coughs> next the youth also um, talk about the geographical barrier which limit the connect connectivity of the region, especially infrastructure, logistics, and transformation and transportation. Apart from that, our students also recognize that each country got their own priorities and national interests. That if you 
look at it from the perspective of the government, it kind of put up the barrier for cooperation. So what, what is the recommendation by our students? Our students recommend that number one, they see that the do, uh, apart from the, the challenges of the connectivity, they see that there's opportunities for mobility and, and exposure, especially for, for the youth. And they are quite confident that the, the youth could contribute to the, the future connectivity of the region and overcome those barriers, those problems, those negative feelings that put up with the, the attempt to, to connect. Secondly, because this naturally these students from university, so so they recommend that the universities should intensify the student exchange uh, through many programs and activities. Uh, for example, doing the joint research, doing the cultural exchanges, cultural visits. accelerate the, the degree the credits exchange among, among our members. Also encourage the, within the university, encourage the, the clubs or societies that, or extracurricular activities that emphasize the connectivity or the ASEAN, same thing that that you are doing here with the Center of, for ASEAN Studies in China. And also suggestion for summer camps and short, short visits for students. Th these are the recommendations by, by the students. And they put up uh, some more recommendations, such as the government should provide more financial support and scholarships. And also, number four is to, they suggest the universities to incorporate ASEAN and East Asian studies, similar thing, into the curriculum with some selected courses such as languages, culture and arts, history and politics, environmental studies, economics. Uh, this kind of suggestion to the university administrator is really put you in a very difficult situation. The, the space for, for what we call the general education is already tight all the time, and there's a lot of requests, particularly to, to boost your student with the, the so-called 21st century skills. So everything is, had been demanded on the general education in particular, ASEAN studies, critical thinking skills, entrepreneurship, those stuff. So, it's understandable that if you are the, the uh, university administrator, this, this presents a lot of problems, how, how to solve it. The student also requested the uh, effort that to, to encourage entrepreneurship and leadership skills. In the universities, They also recommend the, the need to erase the language barriers for better interactions and connectivity, particularly by promoting the English 
and enrichment programs. We, we have no problem if you look at uh, students from Brunei, from Malaysia, from the Philippines, from Singapore, but when it comes to Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Myanmar, Indonesia mostly, uh, English is still uh, the barrier for, for communication. That's another one for general education, communication skill, particularly cross-border cross or cross-cultural communication. But English is still the, the currency that the student requested to be improved by the university's curriculum. They also encourage particular AUN to do more on the voluntary programs to promote cultural and educational exposures. Uh, those are the, the perspective from, from the students. Now I'd like to show you what the, what the AUN, the, the real example of what the AUN or the ASEAN University Network have been doing in terms of the, the cross-border exposure and experiences for students from our universities members. Uh, for example, we, we've been doing the scholarship sending students to study in, in other countries. For example, in, in Korea, we have scholarship every year, 20 scholarship to that job university. Study in the ICT and also in the social science with opportunity to, to do the two to three months internship at the international organization or firms in South Korea. We also have the short-term short scholarship to Kyoto University it's called Winter Seminar on Human Security Development and Energy Science. <coughs> Been running for several years now by Graduate School of Energy Science, Kyoto University. Provided uh, 15 scholarship to our students, Chiang Mai University included, for two weeks. two weeks of what I call the interdisciplinary study about energy science and the issues related to human security development. This one is open every year for, for students to apply. Good chance to, to study for two weeks with the top Kyoto University university professors and a chance to see some some real, real stuff there in Kyoto. Is this people to people? I, I, I don't know. We also have a China scholarship. We, uh, every year we provided through the government China, 30 full scholarship for our students to do master PhD program. In China. Whatever universities in China, the student could get, or could successfully apply to. Is this kind of contribution to people to people Cultural exchange, maybe. As for the platform for the youth activities among the AUN network, we have ASEAN Student Leaders Forum every year. <coughs> this forum is for the, the leader, the student representative from the so called student union from our universities get together 
to to share the ideas, knowledge, and experience on how to to run the student activities and do the networking. Hopefully, one day they could come up with a kind of joint project or joint activities among the university student union in in our region. Also some kind of exposure. Every time the student went to to this platform, always the kind of exposure to to the host cultures. The first event was held in Singapore. From from this kind of platform, uh, after Singapore, we we did it in next two years. After Singapore, we did it in Chuang Kong University in Thailand, and then we we went to Brunei. And from Brunei, the student, the the student leaders, they dis discuss the the limitation. What what are the limitation? They pointed out that there's a limitation on the awareness, the knowledge, also the limitation on support system. Still, university still gave not so much support to the student union to connect with their counterpart outside the country. There's no problem if you connect inside your own your own country, but when it comes to connection with outside, with with other student union in other country, there's the limitation of support system and and resources. They also recognize the. The last item is differences. They recognize the the differences in communication, in ideologies, in political view, in culture. For example, in Vietnam, you cannot use the term student union. It's dangerous. They call it student club or student association. And the leader. The student leader of this student club, they also belong to the arms of the the party. So this is a when when students come together from different country, they they learn this kind of differences. I think it's it's not a problem; it's a good thing that that they learn the differences. Also, I ideologies uh, in Vietnam. There's a. We talk. We, we mentioned earlier about general education in Vietnam. It's compulsory to learn the subject called, uh, if I remember correctly, the subject called uh, Ho, Chi, Ho Chi Minh ideology, something like that. That's the the compulsory subject that every student must learn. And when I ask, is that exactly the ideology? Some of the top administrator, they told me that, oh, it's a, it's, this course is a, a vehicle to support students for to develop critical thinking. That's, that's what they told me. But the subject is called uh, Ho Chi Minh ide ideology, so, something like that. Culture also a lot to learn from. You, you know when when they are, they got together, uh, students from from Muslim countries, they, you know the 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 diet dietary restriction. And sometimes we got students from Singapore, vegetarian, or those 
Keto diet or so it's for I think for students it's fun to learn about these differences in man, in in many aspects. So those are from the student union meeting. Uh, the, uh, the next one uh, under the AUN. Yes, please. Uh, why Laos uh, didn't participate in the student leader program? Uh, sometimes we don't have participation from Myanmar, Laos, and Cambodia. S sometimes it, it depends year, year, year by year. Sometimes Laos could come. Sometimes Myanmar could come. And sometimes they cannot come. So also it depends. This is year by year. So sometimes they could come. But mostly, mostly students from Myanmar couldn't come. They could not come to, or couldn't go to our, our platform. Similar, the, also the next one, which is, I think, much more to the, the topic that you, you asked me to talk about, the, the culture, culture, cultural exchange. Other day, you and we have, we have been running uh, this youth cultural forum for for fifteen for sixteen years now. Uh, mind you, uh, most of the student forum by the AUN is the oldest in the region. We are the the pioneer of this kind of forum in in in, in ASEAN region. And a lot has been learned and, and duplicate in by by others, which is a good thing. We are the we are the trend center and, uh, and produce the model. Um, this is a gathering of uh, again our students from thirteen countries, and each year year by year depends. Sometimes we cannot get anyone from Laos. Sometimes from Brunei, if this is a, the week that they have a midterm exam. Students cannot join. So it's very, very difficult. Actually, I don't need some. I just want to show you them. I know that you listen listening to my monotone voice for one hour. It could be torturous. So I, <laughs> I let you see. This AUN cultural forum, youth cultural forum, is a kind of we got the talents, our talents from our university students who who have talents in in the art and performances, especially cultural performances. Um, the format is to to learn to learn particular art form or cultural performance from the host country. We we take turn the way we we have the host country is to rotate among our ten 10 ASEAN countries, but the event is participated by, by 13 countries from the three, the three, uh, the ASEAN plus three as well. They are also sending the, the university students. Uh, the way we design this platform is very, very too detailed. Uh, we, we do the sequencing. We emphasize the se sequencing that they learn from each other, not only learning from the culture of the host country, but also learn from, from other culture. Uh, this the, the video I show you is done by, hosted by University of Science Malaysia. Uh, we have a 
activity like a street street performance. They just on campus. They just close down one one street on campus and make a thirteen boots. And each each country show show their culture in the in the boots. We also have a cultural trip visit. Uh, these, these are the delegates, uh, the, the, the academics who head of the delegates from, from Thailand. The lady in the middle from Chiang Mai University. If you could recognize her. This one, this one, yes. It's from Chiang Mai. Um, the, the academic advisor here, they advise the student how to, how the five university in this case from Thailand, how the five universities could combine the performance into one. Otherwise, you will have Chiang Mai perform one, one thing, uh, Burupa University perform another, Mai Don another thing, and Chuang Kong do the, the Thai dance. So it's, it's, it's undesirable. So, we have the advisor to, to help the student to combine their, their performance together. Uh, this one, the chance for students to, to see the old city in Penang. Uh, direct exposure. We really emphasize the direct exposure, uh, not only to other culture, but also to the artifact the thing that brought with them, with the delegates. Uh, you could see there's a chance that other, other countries learn how to do the Thai dance. Uh, in this case, we have a compulsory session that every delegate must learn one, one local performance by the host country. In that case, it's called something like bo bo Borea or Boring. I, I, I can't remember exactly. Um, it, this kind of activities take a lot of time and investment, particularly the university member must sponsor the, the trip for your student. And host country also invest in the accommodation and meals and inland travel. So we talk about cross-border cultural exchange. This thing always costs some money. But you can see the, this is a street, street booth and performance. This one is booth, street booth. We have another one is street performance. This one is showing the artifacts for each country. So ordinary students in, on campus could see see the artifacts, the all the cultural items from from the other twelve countries. This is from China. This is from Thailand. It depends on how, how, how you could bring anything. We've been doing this for 16 years now. I think to me, it, it, for the student, it was the investment because we could do a very systematic sequencing exposure. For, for the student who participated. Uh, most of the time, when, when you organize this kind of cultural forum, you, you have the image of, of it's just to show Thai dance, to show the flag blowing, and to listen to some traditional song. But, but for AUN, we, we design the activities and sequences, sequencing it in order to serve the very specific uh, learning objective 
you, 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 I think you, you all recognize that now in, in our, every course you must learning outcome is very important. So when we do the, the cultural activity, we also set up a very specific learning outcome. For example, one of our learning outcomes is students exposed to different kind of culture in ASEAN. Or they must have learned some knowledge about other countries. Or they improve on their uh, cross-cultural communication skill. That's a, for example. Uh, this happened in Malaysia, so it's a lot of choice from Malaysia. You could see this, this from, from Malaysia, Malay dance. Different kinds, different kinds. And mind you, our, our students, who, this is a Thai, this is from Thai, they combine. This is how they combine five universities, combine the show into one, into only one set. happened in the gala night. So, those are the, yeah, this from Japan, from China, from Vietnam. But naturally, being youth, at the end of the day, they, they also enjoy themselves. Uh, the most popular show in the past few years, the most popular show is from Korea. Every people like K-pop. <laughs> so that's the most popular one. Because we, we show 13 different kind of uh, performances and it just happened that K-pop is the most popular one. Uh, so, maybe this is the, the most obvious one example of the, the cultural exchange that happened So, when, you, when our Thai University is sending your students to participate in this cultural forum many years, for, for a few years, they, one day they, come up with, they came up with the idea that uh, they, they want to, to do a kind of similar thing, but to show it to the the local Thai audience. After, after four or five years of participating in, in that kind of forum, so finally these five universities, they come up with the idea of why, why don't we show this, this thing uh, and our experience to Thai audience. So I, I, my office also supported this idea and the five universities, they they came together and put up the team and they made a show. The first show is organized in Chulalongkorn University, but it's done by five universities. A UN member, uh, Chiang Mai University, Chulalongkorn University, Mahidol University, Burapa uh, University, and Prince of Sokha University. They did that in Thailand, uh, in Bangkok. Uh, a couple of months ago, this is the, the pilot. Here, they, they're doing, this is Thai. This is Thai, 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 Thai show. But if you see the middle, middle right, is a Filipino, Filipino bamboo dance. So they learn from this Thai student by participating in those cultural forums, they learn. Mind you, they are talents in their own, and they learn, and they could copy, duplicate it, and show it to the local audience. That, that is from uh, Philippines. The, the, the middle left, the middle left is 
the from Indonesia. So kind of dance from Indonesia. Also the top left is a kind of from Malaysia. And the top right is a kind of dance from the Philippines. But all performed by our our students to show the Thai Thai audience. And and from this show, the first show, this was very successful that to the point that I heard that some some corporation in Bangkok would like to to commission this this team to do the show again. So, so I hope the, the by by doing this the the culture of other culture of other countries will will be what you said disseminated and spread to the Thai audience in the wider in the wider sense in the wider area. So that 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 is the cultural forum. We also doing the educational forum that, that I mentioned earlier. This is a gathering. Cultural forum is a gathering of the the, the artistic talent student. For educational forum is a gathering of the the, the academic serious student. Academically, uh, it's a twin, twin event. We do it with young speaker contest. And last year, the winner is from Loyal University of Phnom Penh. So, I know most of the audience today is from Thailand. You know, you know that. Our students got a serious problem related to English skill. And you could see that now in ASEAN, in the ASEAN platform, the speaker contest is won by a student from Cambodia. And secondly, six, uh, first runner up is won by student from Xiamen University, Chinese. Cambodian, Chinese, and then the third, the second runner-up, the third place is won by student from Universitas Indonesia. Uh, they beaten student from Singapore, from the Philippines, from Malaysia. So you, you could see. Some sometime we got uh, runners-up from Laos. Lao, Lao Tian students. So that, that's something for you to think about in terms of our, not our, I'm not talking uh, for Thailand, I'm, I'm working for ASEAN, so you may think about your student English skill. Yeah, we have the, this is the final round, six finalists. Every university participate, participated in this speaker contest and we got from 23 or 24 universities, five from Thai University. We got six, six students went through, went, went to the, the final round. Uh, last year, none from Thailand to the final round, even though you, you sent your student there. So that, that's a young speaker contest. We also have the educational forum that I, I told you earlier. Serious discussion. And you see on the right, the delegate from Indonesia. In the middle, delegate from Japan. And the lower, the lower photo is the delegate from Malaysia all discuss seriously from Thailand not that active so I think I leave that to to be your problem not mine they all discuss 
very seriously discuss. Uh, this year, uh, this year the theme is on the relevance of universities in the digital era. They they they're discussing this topic. And I don't know. Your students are a bit, were a bit quiet. So I leave it to you. That's your problem. We have the use joy statement, as I mentioned earlier. Apart from that, we have sometimes the AUN Secretariat organize the, the short visit program for students from Japan. This one, we create a direct exposure to Thai, Thai culture. And again, our, our platform is a model for other universities in, in Southeast Asia to, to learn from and duplicate. Because partly, partly we have been doing this for, for nearly 20 years. So it's, we, we try to improve every year. And finally we got uh, what we call the best model so far but we try to improve it every year. This book you can download for free from AUN website. We emphasize on direct exposure. So these Japanese students, they're riding their bike in the countryside in, in Thailand. See, direct exposure. We emphasize direct exposure, but we we still include that, but to a very small portion. Lecture, but very small. Classroom activities, very minimum. To introduce the students to the, the lecture, in this case, about ASEAN economy, by, uh, I think you may know him, the, by Dr. Pitti. Yes. Again, direct exposure. I think the best way to, to learn about other cultures is direct exposure. Preferably longer term. But, but some also argue that it's not necessary that direct exposure will give you the, the advantage of learning and understanding other culture. I heard from some, some sources mentioned that sometimes Particularly if you come from a superior, so-called superior culture, and when you are exposed to other culture, sometimes, sometimes it reinforces your superiority, your belief in your own superiority. So I'm not making that statement categorically, the statement that direct exposure is a good thing to learn and understand other culture to have a very uh, good understanding of, of other culture is not necessarily particularly if you are from so-called superior culture that that's the theoretical issues <coughs> that need to be proved anyway we still believe in the direct exposure why? Why are we doing this? All those platforms that I have shown you. We are doing this because we have several objectives in, in doing this kind of uh, cross-cultural uh, activities. Uh, could be divided into two, two sides. One is about exposure. We, we want the student to to expose to the identities and different ways of life in ASEAN. And also to learn about the opportunities and challenges in ASEAN that, that could be opportunity for themselves, for the students themselves. And, and we, we like to have a student to have an in-depth knowledge of the ASEAN economic community. That's 
related directly to the, the job opportunities. So this is the exposure. As for the competencies, we like students to, to have the life skills in, in the pluralistic society, the adaptability, the, the understanding, the also the cross cultural communication skills, how you communicate with different cultures. That's what we, we like them to have. And lastly, we like to build in the, our students the ethical and creative leadership. For, for example, um, we, want, we would like them to be the, a very responsible citizen, a global citizen. These, these are the, the main objectives. I think I will end my my talk here to to give the opportunities for for the audience. Not necessarily the question. I, I may not answer your academic question because I'm, I'm not the expert in in ASEAN. Maybe I, I also welcome your suggestions on how to improve the interaction for our students. But I'm not sure that the aspect, the aspect that I have shown you is maybe it's a tiny part of what, what you want to talk about, about the, the culture exchange and people to people relation. The UN also uh, provided the, the ASEAN studies courses, full content, but I'm afraid to inform you that it's been done nearly 10 years ago, so the content is now out of date. So, so I'm thinking about improving this, this content. It's been done by our experts from our region. We have 16 topics, ranging from the introduction to ASEAN, civil society, political development, to uh, AEC, Business Opportunity, History, Shared Culture and Identity, Human Development, Green and Sustainable ASEAN, Crime and Terrorism related to the, the regionalization. Uh, it comes with a full, full lecture kit. It can be downloaded for free from, from AUN Secretariat website. But I pretty much don't suggest you to do it because it's out of date now. We need to to revise it, this, this content. Apart from that, we are doing the AUN QA. This is the most famous one. Most loved and most hated. Uh, yeah, we also try to assist University in, in Myanmar with our AUNQA tools and system. Okay, I think I open for the the suggestion or maybe questions from from the participant. Been talking too long already. Thank you, Doctor Shulitis. And now may I open the floor for the all participants to raise the questions. Yeah, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, yeah. Turn, turn, turn. 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 เขาได้ได้ใช้ประสบการณ์จากตรงนี้ในทางอะไรในการสังคมว่านี่กับชุมชนของตัวเองนะคือเราอยากจะรู้นะตรงนี้มันมันช่วยส่งเสริมอะไ
ขึ้นสนใจตามข่าวสารว่าอะไรที่มีประโยชน์มากขึ้นตรงนี้เป็นก็เลยเออแล้วตรงนี้นะมีมีการเก็บข้อมูลว่าการการเกิดขึ้นเลยในยาสารเนี่ยครับ Thank you very much. The question is on uh, has the the AUN done anything related to the survey of the of those alumni who participated, those students who participated in all the the platform that I have shown you. That what what are their life after graduation? Did what did uh, what did or uh, what what do they do for for their own community and society? Uh, especially have they used anything they learned from those experiences to to the good of their own community and society? Uh, thank you very much for this question. It's a, it's a very good suggestion. Uh, the answer is we, we haven't done this thing. Uh, we, we've been doing only only one alumni survey in the in the uh, the project, uh, the Dad Jong Scholarship Project, to that sending student to Korea to, to study in Korea. That one we we done. What what you said? That what what did they do? And the survey result was very good. That for example, uh, student from Cambodia after coming back from Korea, she said. She, she used her experience, her internship experience, and her exposure during her time in, in, in South Korea. She, she used a lot in her, she, she set up her own business in, 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 in Cambodia. So she become kind of, got an international outlook and operate small but significant business. I, I cannot remember what kind of business. Um, Thai, Thai alumni from the Dad John uh, scholarship also mentioned that it it transformed his his outlook as well to become international from from very timid local Thai student. After the one 12 months experience in South Korea, when he, when they come back, a lot, a lot said the same thing. When they come back to Thailand, they change completely. Particularly, the they mentioned that the English skill improve a lot <laughs> because uh, 12, 12 months in South Korea. Apart from learning Korean language, you can use English. Otherwise, you cannot communicate with anyone. So that's that's a direct benefit that these alumni mentioned. Thank you for your your question. I think I have to do something about this for uh, for other platform as well. Yes. Other question or suggestion? I I I, I really welcome if you could suggest something that I can improve. I like to to share the experience that we have done with our students here. I uh, but um, we did the program. The uh, this is uh, the program like uh, what David have done you know, with the the student and at Chiang Mai University uh, six years ago. Uh, we sent the student uh, to four countries in uh, ASEAN. Uh, because uh, well, uh, before it became the uh, ASEAN community mm -hmm. at the full scale. And uh, what, uh, we sent the student to Laos, National University of Laos and uh, Cambodia, mm -hmm. uh, in Yogyakarta, mm -hmm. and uh, in uh, Vietnam, in Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City. Mm -hmm. okay, uh, five group of students. Mm -hmm. The things that uh, we have done uh, is what uh, we let the student uh, to work together, uh, what Thai student and the student from uh, mm. what the university, the uh, partner university. Uh, I learned that uh, what uh, just like you mentioned, what the the idea of superiority, 
mm. the students uh, what, when they first came to that university, they feel like uh, what they are chauvinistic. Mm. The idea of chauvinistic. Oh. Chauvinistic uh, mm. what is the, the attitude of uh, feeling superiority mm. to uh, trust the, um, what the members of other culture mm. with the thing it is uh, inferior to that mm. culture. Um, uh, at the very first day, mm. they show that mm. you know they are superior mm. than the um, what the uh, student from those university, you know. And we, you know, uh, after a week, mm. they're working together. Uh, at the last day, almost all our students change that attitude. I think this is the uh, what the big things the uh, I, I consider is the most successful of the program okay, uh, because we can change the mindset of our student. That's uh, what uh, our programs consider quite successful at that time. Thank, thank you so much. I really must congratulate you that you use only one week to, to change the, the mindset. Two, two weeks. Yes, and right. after after one week, after one week, when the students mm. get better, you know, mm. uh, after they learn together, mm. they they know that oh, uh, they know the differences, mm. Mm, uh, but between uh, yes. culture. Yes. Mm. I think this is important that uh, a, a lot of talk is on mobility, it changes, but there's a. A, f a final point about the mindset that, that we, we talk about and successfully done by Chiang Mai Shinawat University that we need to take care of. Otherwise, mobility will, will only uh, reinforce your, your cultural superiority. But this is, this is a very good example that um, mindset can be changed if we, you invest and you give some time for, for the student to, to experience. Thank you so much. I think we can have one, one more suggestion or question. Any more questions? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Please give a big applause to you. <laughs> and the thing that